Hi, and welcome to another OpenCRM webinar. This is the latest in our series of webinars that are designed to give you ideas to help you make the most of your journey with OpenCRM. We recently showcased how you can use automation to help with your sales leads and getting them into your sales pipeline. This time I'm going to walk you through the sales functionality embedded in OpenCRM from an opportunity all the way through to when you have pushed invoices across your accounts package. Again, we'll be highlighting a ton of back-end functionality and showing how automation and workflow can help. This is a great video if you're currently using OpenCRM up until the opportunity stage but want to explore the sales features. Starting with a closed one opportunity, let's walk through the whole sales process. I can take this to the next level by selecting New Quote from this drop-down button. You can think of the quote as a place to hammer out the details planned at opportunity stage. If you need multiple versions of a quote, you can edit the quote you created or create new versions from the opportunity. You can update the opportunity from this screen if you need to. As the quotes are all linked back to the parent opportunity, you have a quick audit trail available of your different versions. Let's dive into some of the features of the quote. Firstly, if you use price books, for example, for gold customers or partners, you can use this feature to apply a special price rate that differs from your RRP. You can apply the price book manually on the quote or set it at company level. If you've set the price book at company level, it will automatically implement when you sell a product that is included in the price book. Instead of, or as well as using price books, you can apply discounts at product line level. There is a safety net built in here that allows you to specify the maximum discount permitted. And if that discount is exceeded, then you get a warning pop-up. Note that system admins can override that warning, whereas standard users will have to work within the specified maximum discount. Let me show you another option you have when adding products. This is a great one if you have multiple suppliers for the same items. With that setting enabled, if I now pick a product with multiple suppliers, then a screen pops up showing me the available suppliers that provide this product. This is a really useful feature if you're wanting to procure all your stock from a single supplier or choose items with the lowest buy price. Once you've put your quote together, the next thing to do is to send it to your client. Here we have some powerful automations available using both the email and PDF features. Firstly, you can easily generate the PDF ready to email to the client by using the email PDF button. If you have more than one quote PDF template, then you'll see this screen asking you to pick the template you want to use. The PDF generator will insert your quote details into the pre-configured template you selected, so you don't have to build a document from scratch every time. Once the PDF has been generated, here's another nice piece of automation. As you can see, instead of the standard email template, the system sets an email specific to the quotes module. Another automation you may want to consider is for the system to generate and send the email and PDF by itself. This can be done by setting up an auto email rule. You could use a condition such as setting the relevant quote stage to trigger the email. In the settings area you just need to tell the system which email template and which PDF template to use and then set the condition that will trigger the send. Bear in mind 
All of the above features are available on sales orders, purchase orders and invoices as well as quotes. So if you don't use quotations in your current sales process, you can still adopt the features. OK, so let's assume your client is happy with the quote. Often the next stage is to convert to a sales order. This couldn't be simpler. Simply click the sales order button. This creates the sales order with all the information that you gathered at the quote stage. Next, I'm going to show you a feature that is very popular, Quick eSign. This allows your customers to digitally sign the order online. Thanks, Tom. Uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Danny. I'm Head of Business Development here at OpenCRM. What we thought would be useful is to give you some real life use cases. What do our clients actually do with this functionality? Looking at the eSign functionality, it's quite common with our clients that people don't return the e-sign form straight away. There's things that they need to do, they might need to gather direct debit information, they might need to gather a purchase order number, and that's not instantaneous, so it might be two or three days or even a week before the sales order is actually e-signed. Uh, so what you can do is, based on the e-sign, which is a status, one of our clients actually triggers an email plan off the back of that status. That email plan actually goes as a text message, which then goes to the salesperson's phone. And then when they get the message, they know that the sales order that they sent has been e-signed. What they can then do is either deal with it themselves and progress it, or they can notify the office that that sales order has now been e-signed and would they like to progress it for them. Thanks, Danny. There are a couple of e-sign options available. Do look at our FAQs to see which model best suits your business. We'll follow steps as with the quote to generate and send an email with a PDF to the client. This time, within the email, we have included a link. This link is dynamic. When sent, it will update with details specific to the sales order. To add an extra level of control, we can add a click through tracker to our email. When configured, this alerts us that the recipient has received the email and clicked on the eSign link. To see this from a client perspective, within the email, they can click on the link. As you can see, it has auto-populated the order number. All that they need to do is fill in their email address to access the eSign screen. If they are happy with the order, they just need to add a signature to complete. In the back end, a number of things happen automatically. Firstly, it updates the sales order status to e-signed and adds the e-sign audit details. Secondly, I have enabled this setting to lock the order once it has been e-signed. After all, you're not likely to change the order once it has been agreed on both sides. Now might also be a good time to run a workflow to update the company type to customer. Using the criteria of the order being e-signed to trigger that workflow. Now that the order has been signed and terms agreed, it might be the right time to start a project to manage the deliverable components of the sale. Again, the project can be created and assigned using workflow from the sales order. So I've created a workflow to create the project and assign it to the relevant person, link the company in the contact and notify the accounts team. Your team can then manage the delivery of the work on the project. If your projects follow a standard procedure, you could use an action plan to automate the activities needed. Here you can see the activities have been created and that time has been allocated against the project. So you can see the project time spent and what is still outstanding. The project and sales orders are linked together so by using the timeline in this instance, 
it is very easy for one team to view the progress of the other. If you think back to where I showed how to link products to suppliers, this becomes very useful if you want to order goods required to fulfill the sales order by using a purchase order. Here you can see which products come from each supplier so you can place a relevant order with each of them. The purchase order screen is very similar to the quotes or sales order screens we've looked at but with a few differences. In the billing and shipping address areas you can choose if the supplier should bill you or your client directly and also whether they should ship the goods to you or the customer or the address used on the sales order if that's different. So let's look at those purchase order addresses in a bit more detail. Uh, as I'm sure many of you are aware, uh, many of our clients do sort of a, a ship and drop scenario. So they might place a purchase order, but those items that they've actually purchased never ever make it into their warehouse. They never come into the office. There's just no need. As an example, if you were a photocopier supplier, you actually don't want a warehouse full of photocopiers because they'll have a shelf life. What you want is the person that you're purchasing it from to get an order from you and you to ship it directly to their your client. So therefore, that's dropped to them and you can go and do the install. Well, that gives you a level of control. It prevents you from having to hold a large amount of stock, which has a high value and gives you everything that you need. Thanks for that, Danny. Really useful. You can also see the product grid is much simpler as details such as discount, markup and sell price are not relevant here. The email PDF function works as I showed you on the quote. The difference here is that the email is sent to the supplier and not the customer. Here again you have that nice automation whereby the PDF template you select gets automatically added to an email geared towards your purchasing. With the purchasing now done, let's hop back to the project. As we saw before, you have a series of activities linked to the project so you can track every stage of delivery. Once that is done, you can use the project status marking it as closed. Here, once more, automation is your friend. With the project done, that means the sales order is ready to be invoiced. I've used Workflow to update the sales order status to ready for invoicing and to notify the salesperson of this. Here you can see the updated status. I've also used an automated email plan to send a satisfaction survey to the customer. Invoicing from the sales order is very similar to other progress through the sales phases. Click the invoice button to load the invoice screen with all the previous details pulled across. I have used an additional setting to automatically set the invoice due date to be 30 days after the invoice has been raised. You can use various mechanisms to alert you when an invoice due date is approaching or has passed. This could be a custom view to show all invoices due in the next seven days or an action plan to send you a notification. You could even automate an email to be sent to the customer when the invoice becomes overdue. I'd like to give you a quick insight into how OpenCRM integrates with Xero. When you have the integration enabled, you'll see a couple of buttons on the invoice screen that relate to Xero. When you're ready, simply select the invoice or invoices you want to push across and click to send to zero. Your accounts team can now retrieve and review the invoice in zero without needing to access OpenCRM. Your sales team can review and click the update from zero button whenever they want to see what's happening. Having used the update from zero button, 
it has now set the status in OpenTRM to live on my invoice. At the time when the invoice becomes due, you can also see how it updates the due balance information in the credit control section on the company record. When your accounts team has reconciled payment against the invoice, then again if I update my invoice from zero in OpenCRM, you can now see the invoice shows a status of paid and if we look at the company credit details, that due balance has been reduced by the amount paid. All that has happened without sales needing to log into zero and no need for accounts to log into OpenCRM. Okay, we're coming to the end of the webinar, so let's summarize. Don't forget the sales process can be adapted to suit your needs. If you go from opportunity straight to a sales order, you can miss out the quote stage. You can manage e-signing on quotes instead of sales orders if that's how you operate. Invoices and purchase orders can be pushed to accounts packages such as Sage 50 or Zero, so effectively your sales team can manage their entire sales process within OpenCRM, pushing financial details to your accounts team who can manage the rest in their chosen platform. Hopefully that has given you some ideas as to how you can make the most of the sales capabilities in OpenCRM if you are not doing so already whilst taking advantage of the automations available. Thank you for watching.